Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On today's video, we're going to address an issue with West Virginia land always being on the move. So come see what we've got. All right, for those of you keeping score at home, yes, uh, I did get my annual haircut. It was time to get my wig busted, so don't adjust your sets, it's, it's all gone. <clears throat> Should have seen the look on the lady's face when I told her I only get my hair cut once a year. Anyway, I'm back here at the road going back to the retreat. This road goes on back about the middle of our property where we're you're trying to build our off-grid retreat. So last year, last fall, when it was dry, we came back and did a lot of earthworks here, back at the retreat, improving the road, doing all those things. Uh, well, one part of that, of course, was creating proper drainage on the road because, as you all know, until I can get you know, tons of stone base put down here, a dry dirt road is much better than a wet, muddy road when it comes to back and forth on a regular basis. Well, the roads are held up really, really well, except for one spot right here. And uh, let me show you some details. So the barn and the workshop and the house, everything's that way. And as you come up past the boar pasture, this, where that uprooted uh, stump is, is uh, the edge of the boar pasture. So as you come up past the boar pasture up out of the creek and come further out this road, I've had this nice ditch cut here that we, we did last year. Some of it was already in place, but uh, just dredged it out more, made it more functional. And it's done a great job of keeping the water against the hillside, even water coming off the hill, water coming down the road. I'm standing on a decent little slope right now. And that ditch line continued all the way up and around, there's this little pocket that you can kind of you kind of see how the road kind of, there's a spring there and that produces tons and tons of water. Well, the issue that happened is, believe it or not, this was actually all cleared at one point. This ditch line just continued on through, but it looks like the ground has moved considerably this way and it's closed off my ditch. So when I stand here and look downstream, so this is where the water wants to run, you can kind of see how there's been a bulge here of ground. And uh, that's obviously causing the issue. The ditch can no longer, no longer drain. Now that water just fans out. And unfortunately, it's at the most inopportune spot where that water fans out in like five different ways and goes across this small little clearing, just making it muddy constantly. And <clears throat> here at the spring, that spring's right there in that little joint, drains this part. Since that's always producing water, it's not really going to dry up anytime soon. In fact, the whole point in coming back here is we've had about three, four days of no rain and uh, mid 80s. So it's unseasonably warm and it's dried things out a lot more than it normally would this time of year. So I thought, well, I'm going to try to come up here and get in front of this before a thunderhead that's supposed to come in later tonight happens. So I wanted to see you kind of do an assessment and see what it's going to take. I brought my shovel, but I see right now shovel's not going to get this done. There's way too much, way too much material that has to be moved here. So how do I know it's slipping there? Well, obviously it's dirt that wasn't there before is now there, but if you even look up here on the hillside, you can see all these undulations. That just shows me over time that different, different times that the ground's just kind of moved, just keeps moving on down here. So the fix that I'm gonna to try to do and clear the ditch line back out may only last for a week, a couple years, who knows, because that could still keep moving. Now, it's not like the whole mountain's coming down. In fact, I feel pretty confidently that, wait here, let me just show you. I feel pretty confident that my slip is really kind of hanging out about right here. You can see these breaks in the ground that comes around. So right at the base of this, right at the base of that elm tree, you can see exposed. And even over there, there's a break. So even though there's trees still standing on here, and you think, well, if that slipped, wouldn't those trees be laying over? That's not necessarily the case. With these trees, they don't have really big tap roots because there's a lot of stone underneath this ground and, and the roots sometimes grow into the hillside. So sometimes the ground can move and the trees just move with it. So that, <laughs> that little sugar maple may have been two feet higher, uh, you know, a month ago or this winter, whenever that moved, before that moved. So as I go to dig that out, there's a chance that it may move a little bit more, move a little bit more. If that's the case, then of course we'll have to look at bigger equipment and do some sort of slip mitigation um, or eventually move the whole thing, which is right now, that's just a ton and ton of dirt. So that probably wouldn't be feasible. 
You can also see there's just a ton of water coming out of the ground right here where this slip is. In fact, I just stepped there and it is just so gushy. So you can see. There's just, there's just a lot of water that comes out. All this, majority of this is all red clay. So when it fills up with water, it just gets so heavy that it just wants to move. So what I'm going to do is go fetch the tractor <clears throat> and we're going to gingerly with the, the bucket to try to cut some of this out. Really want to try to get this changed from instead of going this way and over to at least get it pointed back into the uh, back into the ditch line. So even if I don't mess with this part per se, that's where it seems to be moving the most, then that would be helpful. some depth to that. <laughs> that mud's got a bit of sink to it. You have to be careful not getting into that too much. Obviously I'm kind of wallowing out my road, but that's just going to be the case. So I can get the water off of it, then get it dried out, then I can come back and dress it up a little bit. There's definitely a lot of water hanging out in all this red clay mud. That's definitely the reason why it's moved so much. Oh man, I didn't think I was gonna make it out of that one. So you can see the water rolling now. It was my intention to go up there and, and break that dam to have all that water come through while I'm trying to work, but that is so deep and so soft that my tractor just kept sinking and sinking. So I had to drive up and fortunately up there it dries out. The bank here dries out just enough that I could drive out of it. But I thought, oh no, I'm going to get hung up here and have to get the winch and everything to get it out. So I could obviously leave this big cut like it is, the, the, the tire track, and that would drain everything okay. Even right here where I've cleaned this up, coming at it laterally, that would work. But leaving that big bank like that, it's just asking it to go thump right back down into place as soon as we get a heavy rain. Again, I hate to work it with all that water coming down it now, but we'll see what we can do. Now, if this doesn't work, if the hillside keeps coming down and I just keep doing this over and over again, instead of trying to combat the entire mountain from moving down on me a little at a time over the years, I could obviously just move my road over. And that's why I'm taking the overburden that I dig out and putting it over here. Granted, it's an easy place to put it, too. You don't have to transport it anywhere. But I can put my overburden here, and you can see if I take these trees out, I could cut all those trees, just keep pushing overburden this way, and I could move my road over here. So when this slips down to this bench and settles, it just slips and stays. Now, there's a chance the whole thing could go at some point, but that's a chance you have of living in West Virginia in the first place. <laughs> Egg treads work great until they become racing slicks. <laughs> All right, I really, really upset 
a whole flock of frogs that were hanging out there too. So it's, uh, it's breeding season and I just blasted through the love tunnel. So I went ahead and ran the length of the ditch all the way down to my other road and that's just as deep as this is. So this has really, really gotten soggy since I've gotten the water off of it uh, through the winter. I didn't realize just how much silt is collected here. Check this out. So this is the ditch down here, but this is up, this is up almost 12 inches. And the amount of water coming out of the hillside right there. Just coming right out of the ground. And of course right here, super dry. Down over there by my tripod, super dry. What I'm trying to do, if I was a good equipment operator and if I could get my tractor sideways <laughs> lateral uh, easier without all the stuff in the way, take the bucket and smooth this down, try to compact it, take out any pockets that are hold water and, and obviously cause it to become heavier, but I'm not gonna be able to dress it down as much. If I had a backhoe, then obviously I could do that really nicely. I just realized I'm burying my shovel too, so probably ought to get that before that goes completely away. I think before I'm done, I'll run this ditch line one more time. Um, I'm brave enough to do it, see if I can get it dressed up and draining. It's draining really well. But I don't want to get stuck, but we'll video in case we do. Look at this little guy. Whoa. It amazes me to be this far from the stream. You know, <clears throat> tiny stream over there. And this little tiny snapping turtle. He still wants to eat me. <laughs> He's a little ticked. Kind of tore up his habitat. So we'll uh, send him this way. Carry on, dude. I don't know, you probably couldn't see it from that angle, but as I was driving through there, all these frogs were jumping out. And they were like, I say, I say, boy, what, what do you think you're doing, boy? And you know why they talk like that, don't you? You know what their name would be if they talk like that. Don't make me say it. All right, I'm going to say it. They're froghorn leghorn, right? You know what I'm saying? All right, let's get back to work. So that driving through the ditch worked perfectly, except for my box blade caught a little bit of the bank right here. Nice that it cut it off, I'm trying to keep that steep face off, but it filled in my ditch. So I'm gonna get the shovel, clean that out. And I think we may call this good for a bit and see if it dries out a little bit more. Again, if we have this big rain event tonight, then that'll be a test too to see if things start moving. Froghorn Leghorn, you get it? thought it was funny. They're actually waiting for more. Okay, maybe that's not what they're waiting for. <laughs> All right, so fast forward four days, I think. Yeah, four. I don't even remember what day this is. <laughs> anyway, fast forward, I think at least four days and four days without rain and come back here to assess to see how things have dried out. And so far, really looking good. This was all a muddy mess because the water, of course, was running across here and just fanning out all over my small clearing. It's now dried up. I've got a little puddle there where my tractor tire made some ruts. So I can come back with the box blade and knock that down a little bit. But the ditch is still running because of the spring. Still water creeping out of the hill right here. Still got water in the ditch line coming from my other seep up there. 
So it hasn't moved, but of course, you know, I wasn't expecting it necessarily to move in five days. Uh, the test will be throughout the season as we have the, uh, the, uh, the rainy parts come in summer, you know, the heavy downpours, those type of things, but even more the freeze and thaw of winter. So it may be this time next year that I may have to address this again. Interestingly enough, I had a comment this week on the channel, obviously prior to this video coming out, I think it was probably in reference to one of my other videos where I was showing our, our, the big slip that we had years ago back up on the South Ridge. And somebody had said, hey, I've, I've thought about moving to West Virginia, but those landslides, those, those slips kind of scare me a little bit. Is that a big deal? I'm going to say anywhere that has sloped land has the potential for slippage. I mean, look at the landslides in California when they get the, the fires and the rains. I mean, anything that's got a good slope to it has the potential of breaking loose. See what winter does to rock faces as you go along the interstate. You know, the freeze and thaw makes those rock faces, you know, turn a boulder loose. So really anything. I mean, yeah, it's a concern, but it's kind of like Florida with sinkholes. Yeah, they happen, but the odds of them happening right underneath you are slim. But it is a risk you have to take. Uh, with here, with choosing a place to live, usually the hillside will speak to you. I mean, this... This hillside, you can just tell by looking at it. I can, I can go around and five, you show you five different places where over the years, the hillside has moved and built accordingly. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be any more fearful of coming to West Virginia or Eastern Tennessee or Western Virginia, Pennsylvania, where there's higher Appalachian mountains and be concerned about landslides any more than I would be anywhere else. Now you flatlanders, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Well, I thought this would be a neat little uh, little detail to show you all some of the things we have to battle with here. Again, when the land moves a little bit, you think you've got something taken care of and it, it, uh, it throws you a curveball, then you just got to come in and adjust it. But being able to get that drain is going to allow me to get my road established more. And like I said, if it does move, then I'll probably just move the road over, let the hillside win, and just keep my ditch there because it's, it's going to kind of lock in against this bench anyway. Well, I appreciate everybody watching. Take care.